Hi, my name is Coy Stein, and I'm with Degree Controls Adaptive Cool. Adaptive Cool is a division of Degree Controls. Degree Controls has been around about 11 years, continually, uh, constantly in thermal management, all the way from the chip level up to uh, data center level. Uh, and Adaptive Cool has focused on data centers with a new product called Room Scale Intelligent Cooling. Uh, this is a modification or an enhancement of a, a recent or a, a, an older version, but uh, the yeah, new like system the has several, many, many new features uh, added to it. But it basically right consists now. of a system of air movers that mm -hmm. reside underneath the floor, okay. and also air movers that may reside above the ceiling here to uh, provide cold air just where it's needed and in the right amount that it's needed, and also take hot air from hard to hard to uh, gather spots in the data center, take it directly back to a crack unit. So the point of the system is to control an entire data center by breaking it into thermal zones. Thermal zone, we found, happens to be about 1,000 square feet in a data center. And it may contain a, a crack unit or it may not. But, so what we do is we have several air movers inside that thermal zone which monitor that entire zone and we actually control that as a zone. Okay. So each air mover will modulate based on local control or based on control from the uh, resource monitor which is the brains of the whole unit. It keeps track of the health of the unit, makes sure that all the fans are operating and also gathers all the the data, the, the alarming and the trending and so on. Uh, what we can do at a certain zone is that if there is a problem in another zone, the zone has enough air movers to actually change the airflow within that zone in order to physically move air to another place where it, was, where it is needed more. So here, here you can see that all of the zones are, are, are being monitored and the condition of the crack unit is displayed. You can actually see a little bit more detail on a screen like this, which says for that zone, some of the details about the crack unit, the maximum, minimum, and average temperature for that zone, and then a time trend, which will, will hold about seven days worth of data. And so it will show you a, a trend line, which is useful. I did. Okay. Uh, again, if we go into the zone, I think that's where we were before, you can drill down and go down to the individual rack level. You can see details about that particular fan tray, whether it's operating or not, what its temperatures that it's monitoring are. And uh, then on this screen, we actually have the settings for the fan tray. And we have, at this level, we have three tiers of control. Uh, the, the local control is kind of where everything is operating right now. Um, basically, it's gathering its own information thermally, and the intelligence on board is uh, controlling that fan to speed up for warmer temperatures or slow down and cooler. If it were to lose communication with the monitor here, then the fan tray could respond in a different way. Perhaps that's a critical rack, so you want to make sure that it gets enough air. So you push it to near 100%, something like that. And then finally, in order for those fan trays in the zone to react to other zone problems, we have the network control mode, where the monitor actually takes over. Demonstrate what a crack unit failure would look like at the full room level. What I'm going to do is just flip the switch under here, which simulates a crack unit failure. Now we're we're monitoring the health of a crack unit, and we're also able to control it. So we turn it on and off, and put it in hot standby, so we can save a little bit of energy by putting a unit in hot standby. Okay, so the crack unit in zone 5 just uh, failed, and as you can see, the, the 
zone one is responding, it's, it's assisting. So what it will actually do is slow down the fan trays in that zone in order to match a higher temperature set point. So the higher temperature in that zone is still safe. It's just at the higher end of the safe limit. So hopefully that will create enough positive pressure under the floor to help out this unit that's in trouble. And if we were to wait long enough, all of the zones building up to the unit that's in trouble would respond with assistance, including the one that's turned off right now. So, and the reason we, we leave this in load shed condition is because possibly just responding with, with the zone that is chosen to respond first, it will uh, solve the problem. So we don't need to make any major changes until it's called. They can find out on our website, which is www.adaptivecool.com. Okay, Coy, thanks very much. Yes, thank you.